Unity Point Health St. Luke's Hospital takes you inside the operating room for a transcatheter aortic valve replacement, also known as TAVR. This is a catheter-based valve replacement procedure for patients with severe aortic stenosis, which is a narrowed aortic valve. Marion resident Kathy Olson is undergoing a TAVR procedure after noticing changes in her health. We had to come up several flights of stairs and by the time I got to their car, all of a sudden I realized that I couldn't breathe. And then I just noticed off and on little episodes. I just want to be able to walk and breathe good and not be short of breath. Olson had a condition called aortic stenosis, which was causing her shortness of breath and other concerns. Valve stenosis, whether it's in a surgical valve or whether it's a native, you know, a native valve is a very serious problem. Um, it has a two year 50% mortality. So it's a big deal. It's, it's worse prognosis than metastatic cancer. She had had a previous surgical valve placed uh, and it now, I guess almost 10 years later, it's failed, and so she needed a new valve. It's fairly common, you know, a lot of people have uh, aortic, valve uh, aortic valve stenosis. Um, sometimes they'll develop, you know, stenosis of the surgical valve, which is what happened in, uh, in this case. Uh, but many people have stenosis, or what they call uh, narrowing of their native valve that gets calcified and the leaflets don't open properly. And it's a fairly common problem happens as we get older, the, the valves tend to fail um, because of calcium and, and thickening and scar tissue and for a number of reasons. And so many times it hits patients when they're in their 80s, sometimes younger, um, uh, but many times 80s and 90s are, are sort of the average age of the, the patients that we see with aortic valve stenosis. So we placed a new prosthetic valve inside of the old one. So we paced the heart very fast because as the heart's beating, it's pushing blood out of that aortic valve, um, and that can move the valve, that can make the valve move out of, our, uh, out of position. So if we pace the heart very fast, it'll keep the valve from moving, our cardiac output drops, and then the valve won't move, it won't budge. And so that's what we were doing with pacing, so that the valve will stay stable. And then with this particular valve, uh, which is called a core valve, uh, this valve expands on its own and we will expand it to three-fourths of deployment. So it's not fully deployed, but it's, it's almost fully deployed. And then we can have sit there and assess it. Does it look good? Is it in the right spot? Is there any leak around the valve? What's our gradient? And all those things look favorable and then we release the valve. There, are occasions when a person needs a little help with pacing afterwards and so that's the, the kind of the more common side effect that we see because that valve put, puts outward radial force against the, the conduction system of the valve and so about 8% of the time a person will need a pacemaker afterwards. She did not, uh, but that happens and so that's kind of one of the one of the risks of the procedure. There's lots of data to say that they last just as long as a surgical valve, if not longer. Um, one of the advantages to the catheter-based valves, uh, they're bigger. We get a bigger valve in a person using a catheter-based valve than we would with a surgical valve because there's no sewing ring. And so that'll add a few millimeters to the diameter of the valve. And that makes a big difference in longevity. So she had a, a 21, uh, millimeter surgical valve put in 10 years ago and now she has a 23 millimeter valve and that'll make a difference that that'll that'll impact hopefully longevity a few more years of, of life and so you know 10 15 years down the road we'll do it again sometimes you'll see these people they'll be in the they'll be post post procedure uh, wake up from anesthetic and uh, their color is better you know, you can just tell they, they were sort of ashen when they started and they just pink right up and that's because of better cardiac output. You know, you just all of a sudden have more blood getting out of the heart to the body and that makes a huge difference. People feel better, they're less short of breath immediately, they get up walking and uh, yeah, it's, a, it's pretty remarkable. So this is an overnight stay and people uh, will spend the night in the hospital, we'll do an echo in the morning and then they'll go home that same, that next day. Uh, we'll get a person up walking in the halls She'll, she'll be up walking, have dinner. Um, so we'll just get her up right away, much faster. 
you know, with an open procedure, she would have been in the hospital for four or five days, um, you know, kind of at the low end of things, and then a, a long recovery for repairing the sternotomy and recovery in that regard. So this will be a quick, tiny little incision in the leg. Um, another, we put a little catheter in the wrist artery, that'll heal right up. Um, and so really no issues with wound healing and so forth. Um, and that means she can be ambulatory right away and uh, just back to normal life. It went very smooth, and she'll feel a lot better, and she'll feel better immediately. I'm fortunate enough to be able to have this done right here at home. And I would put this cardiac team up against anybody. When your body starts telling you that you have a problem, you have to go to the doctor and listen to what they're telling you. It will save your life. Don't be afraid to, to come because you'll be well taken care of.